Minister, I've tabled this debate this evening to uh, I've highlight the need for a proper digital strategy for our schools, ICT strategy for schools, um, and to ask when the government will ensure that all primary schools are connected to high-speed broadband, um, and when you'll ensure that all schools, both, post, both primary and post-primary, have the access to equipment that they need, um, curriculum-relevant content, and also training for teachers. Um, to start with broadband, I welcome the fact that we now have had high-speed uh, broadband rolled out to our second-level schools, and schools are now getting speeds of up to 100 megs, um, which gives them the type of speed that they need to be able to integrate ICT properly in the classroom, to use video content, to be able to upload, upload and download things from the cloud, all of that. But unfortunately, we have a huge digital divide now between primary and second-level. Um, while second-level schools have uh, high-speed broadband, the department's own figures for primary schools um, is that they have an average speed of up to five um, megabytes per second, which is incredibly slow. Um, and sc some schools actually have considerably slower speeds than that. There was an article in uh, this month's INTO magazine, In Touch, where a principal was quoted as saying, I think he has 0.74 megs, and he said he'd be fa he was faster when they had dial-up um, than having that kind of speed. So, of course, um, having such slow speeds creates huge problems um, for teachers. It means the teachers are concerned that when they're putting together videos and they're planning to make a presentation to their class, they're not sure if, this, if they'll be able to actually show it properly or not. Um, again, in, in touch the quote scenarios where teacher sits down, gets the class uh, sat around to watch uh, a video, for three or four minute clip, the first minute plays, and then they're sitting around watching a, 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 a uh, watching a timer on the screen, trying to reload the rest of it, and they could be sitting watching that for three or four minutes before the video kicks back in. Um, obviously, that's not acceptable. Also, teachers concerned about you know, having to bring things in on, on USB sticks and things like that, because they're not sure that they'll be able to get access to broadband when they need it, that it could be down. Um, and all that is, in, in, is extremely frustrating. As you can imagine, principals have also said that they're supposed to make online returns now to the department. Some of them are having to do that at home. Um, so they're having to make their OLCS entries at home to ensure that their staff are paid on time and things like that. Um, so there is a, a big difficulty there in terms of broadband speed for primary schools. I understand that work is underway in the department on a digital strategy for schools, on a new strategy. Um, I suppose the reason I wanted to table this was to draw your attention to the huge deficit that's there at primary level. I am now want to ensure that that is addressed as part of that strategy. Perhaps you can give me an update on the department's thinking in that respect, the kind of speeds you're ex expecting to provide for primary schools, when um, they can expect to have proper connectivity and all of that. Um, there's also a need, as I said, um, to ensure that schools have access to curriculum appropriate content. Um, there's tons of content now available on the internet, um, but a lot of it is American, uh, a lot of it is from other countries, and we need to ha be able to give teachers access to appropriate screen content that's age appropriate, that's tied into our own curriculum, um, so that's a huge issue. Equipment um, also is an issue. Some schools have fantastic suite of equipment, maybe they've had partnerships with local businesses or IT companies in the area, um, or sponsorship, and they have good equipment. Others have fundraised from parents um, in the absence of sufficient state funding to put in place equipment, but there is a big gap there as well um, between schools in, the, in terms of the type of equipment that they have, and that needs to be closed. And also, as I mentioned at the start, um, training for teachers, and to ensure that all teachers um, receive adequate training, not just those who might opt in um, to in-service training or out-of-hours training um, in their own time, because of course the people who are most likely to do that are probably the ones who are already ICT savvy, or at least interested in using it. Um, so we need to ensure that all of our existing teachers in the system are brought up to speed um, and know how to integrate ICT into, into teaching and learning and assessment and um, all, all of the other strands of, of our education system. Um, but also that we ensure that at the uh, pre-service level as well, that we're really equipping our new teachers um, with the highest level of, of ICT competency too. So there's so various different issue, issues there, Minister. I think our teachers across both primary and secondary level. Um, many of them have embraced ICT far beyond the, the limits um, of, of the st state underinvestment, but there is a need to step up. I was in a school the other day as well, a second level school um, in Kildare, where the principal raised with me the issue that because uh, the suppression of A posts within schools as well, 
um, that the only way he can get an ICT coordinator is to expect somebody to do it, just out of the goodness of heart, that he can't actually appoint somebody to that post. I think if you want somebody within a school to be able to coordinate it, we have to look at that, about having specific ICT posts. Um, but uh, these were a whole wide range of issues, so perhaps maybe you could in indicate, you could update me on the digital skills strategy, where it's out and add, and if it will address these issues. Thank you.